The concept of failure is so interesting to me. It's not failure if you can pick it up and do it every single day. That's an opportunity. Every day is an opportunity to learn. I realize so many people cut themselves off from that because it's intimidating, A, and B, it's intimidating to lose that, that confidence in yourself. Like I realize that that's a thing. So I don't understand what's so intimidating about learning for people and growing for people. I realize that part of it is that the task itself is intimidating. But to me, part of it also is the the ego in it all. It's like being shitty at something and having to be okay with being shitty at it, not, not viewing it as being shitty at it. Peace is poison. Like too much peace is poison. So many people in the pursuit of peace, the pursuit of comfort, they they completely just just let go of all opportunities for something better. Welcome back to the Three House Show. You just listened to a very short snippet of Alchemist by Moi. Today we have an extremely peculiar guest. We have an extremely ball of energy that continues to remind me to be authentic, to continues to remind me to tap into what makes me me. We have somebody who's accomplished so much, so young, and has like so much more to accomplish. You know, we have a self-taught guitarist. We have, you know what I'm saying? You don't want to be in the ring with him. You know, <laughs> if, if he on the opposite side and it's a wrestling match. You know what I'm saying? That may not be the move, you feel me? We have somebody who has created so much and just continues to deliver, you know, his best image. And today we're going to have a conversation of, you know, a conversation of coming into manhood, a conversation of the big realizations of life, the conversation of, you know, following your passion and kind of getting rid of the distractions, getting rid of the things that don't serve you and, you know, channeling your energy into that one thing that you feel will bring you fulfillment in life. And with that being said, we have the one and only, we got Kari. What's up, y'all? <laughs> you guys are y'all can't see him, but you feel me? Zion with an X, he back at it again, you feel me? <laughs> Episode 21, watch that shit. How y'all doing, me? man? <laughs> The Treehouse is happy to have you. It's an honor to have you. Um, and I was telling you before, like when we first talked on the phone, <laughs> I was like, I feel like I know you. Yeah, man, I've been I've been wanting to put this together for a minute just since I first saw like just the I don't know, bro. I saw your fit on one of the pictures. I was like, man, this nigga's energy is just great. <laughs> I appreciate you, man. No, like I, I believe my first introduction was first Zion was talking about like. He was speaking so highly of you. And he was, he was interested. He was saying how, like, I was, like, talking about how, like, I was a nerd growing up and, like, how I didn't talk to girls or anything and how I was like that. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, Kari be on that. He be doing his own thing. He be complete. And I'd be like, what? And that just reminded me, like, you know what I'm saying? Back in my, back in my, I don't want to say before my cowboy days. But, you know, back when I was, like, innocent and, like, I was like, oh, man, like, I really mess with that. And I believe, like, I follow him on Instagram and then I saw, like, the talent. So he backed up with the talent. And that just really inspired me. Like, he's doing all this. He's in school. You know what I'm saying? And then I saw, like, he could sing, too. You know what I'm saying? Because he, he made an appearance on one of Zion's Go Stream Dust to Dust. You feel? That's the, yeah, Dust to Dust, right? Yeah, shameless and, plug. Kari's in the loop. My brother's project, <laughs> Dust to Dust, dropped 2 2 Shit was great. <laughs> Go stream it. Go stream it. Go stream that shit. Shameless plug. <laughs> she almost plugged, but yeah, I heard that and I was like, what? Boy over here with the guitar, boy over here with the vocals, you feel me? And then he sent me a text. He was like, just wait, just wait. I'm going to build a tree house. He said, I'm working. Just, I'm building a tree house. And I'm like, okay, let's see. Bet. Because like, you feel me? Like, I know I'm like, okay, a lot of people be saying they're going to do stuff. Let's that see if they actually follow up. Shit. Exactly. And then 318, what happened? Before 318, a rollout, you know what I'm saying? Like the weeks coming up to that. <laughs> and, and so if you want to talk about that process, because like you've seen so overjoyed. Dude, yeah. So 318, you know, people know me, know that's my birthday, Piscean season, peak. <laughs> and I was just like, man, I'm entering my 20s on this year on on the 
on this year like I, I didn't I didn't know what was up with the energy this year but I was just like this is just the year for me to really for me to really like do it like I, I've been I've been in the basement cooking for years now I was just like it's, it's the time and I was like hitting my 20s and I just I just felt like sharing and it was like it was just such a big moment for me I was like man I was like I just love this the way I've been angling this, I was like, I was on my brother's Beaujolais video playing the guitar. Niggas done seen me with my guitar a million times. I was like, niggas have been paying too much attention. That was Nakari's interlude off Dust to Dust. And I was like, they don't know what the fuck they in for. Mm. And I just love, like, that was, that was, that was such, that was my favorite moment. Just, just engineering that little rollout. Just, just giving people a little taste bit by bit and just watching it just, Watching them just fuck up the the whole like expectation of everything. Yeah, man, that was a special moment for me. <laughs> I'm super proud of you, man. No, for real. Like, I feel like a lot of artists, you know, their introduction to the music game. And I'm not gonna lie, you you blessed. You're I blessed. And I, I feel like I said it to Zion too, like just of having such a supporting family and having yeah. such a motive motivational ass, driven ass, ambitious ass siblings and shit. Yeah, you feel me? Because a lot of people don't. You feel me? Some people don't have them around. So, like, first of all, blessings for that and gratitude. But just, like, the fact that you have that milestone, you know, as your first, like, you know, entry to the game is, like, incredible. Just that alone. Like, you know what I'm saying? The cosigns is getting. You know what I'm saying? You said you did a show. You know what I'm saying? That shit got shut down. We don't talk about that. <laughs> you feel me? You talking about you getting features off of gardens. You know what I'm saying? So, it's like... I wish that happened, right? You know what I'm so it's like it's this jealousy in the in the most positive way. It's like <laughs> I'm wishing that like all of that that all that I'm feeling that that joy that I would have felt if I had gotten that. I just want you to like soak all of that in. You feel me? And just really use that to give you, in addition to like the motivation that you already have, the ambition you already have. But let that be that extra boost. You feel yeah, me? yeah, man. I'm so I don't, I don't know what else to say. I, I feel that, man. That that's real for me, man. Honestly, I think, I think for me, the, the, the like best part of this project was just that I, I felt like it was, it was real for me for the first time. Like, honestly, I've been trying to write for a long time, but, and I said this over the phone with you, I was like, when you learning from others, there's, there's like a couple of modes you could take it. I'm like, I've been a single ass nigga my whole life. I can't <laughs> I can't sing about nobody breaking my heart into two. And I ain't never shot a nigga. So I was like, what the fuck I got to talk about that I'm finna say with my chest? And honestly, that's how I found my voice. I was just like, it's here. Like, I feel it. Honestly. I was like, I was like, I feel grown for the first time. And that was the first time I just was ready. Like Vulture was the first song I recorded. And I was like, you could feel it to an extent. It's like, man, this is my this this is like my my push through that, man. That was such a special moment for me. <laughs> mm. Why was like Vulture? Why did that stand out to you? <clears throat> a lot of reasons. So, like, first of all, that beat had been vaulted for years because I just like my brother stumbled upon it such a long time ago. It was like it's such like, a nasty beat. Like, what even is this, right? With the crazy samples and the crazy like strings and everything and I was like I just love the chaos of this shit I love the like the energy of it like the fire behind it and I was like so first of all I just I just love that challenge and and just being ready to just jump on that and two I just love the energy of the track in general I love that I was ready to talk my shit and that I did <laughs> and that niggas was fucking with it like you know that's that's my biggest track and I was like it, it was it was the moment for me. I was like, that's 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 the one. <laughs> Did you know? Because a lot of artists that like, we hop in the studio, you know what I'm saying, and it's like two or two or two things can happen. The first thing is like in the studio, we're like ah, it's not that good, or it's like ah, it's alright, and then, then like you drop it, niggas fuck with it. Or the other thing that happens is you hop in the studio and it's like you know it's a, a bop, like right when you get out the booth. Was was that was for me? Stuff? I had to fuck with myself deep before I was fin like so if you follow my story like I used to and it's something that's still up I'll just play the guitar and sing along from time to time and shit and I would just give people a taste and see how people felt about it but part of that was because 
I used to sing my whole life, but you get older, your voice starts to change and shit. And I'm like, you know, I ain't got this like this like deep bass. Like I ain't got this 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 overwhelming presence to my voice. But I also ain't got them highs. Like you know, like I love like listening to, to Superboy sing or whatever. Like just fucking going. But I was like, there's this cadence that I've always clung to, and I was like, I I want to see how that sounds to my ears. Like I've been recording myself just singing, rapping for a long time up until then. So that by the time I was ready to record Vultures, I knew what it would sound like. I just needed it to sound right mixed and on the beat. But I was like, I was like, yeah. I was like, when I when I walked out, I was like, yeah, man, it's the one. <laughs> mm. like, like going way back, right? Like what, because obviously, you know what I'm saying, Zion. <laughs> you know, he been at it for a minute. You feel me? Making hits. Your catalog, huge. <laughs> you know, but like I somehow listen to all your songs or almost all of them. So that's that's a big feat for me. But you know what I'm saying? Because I loved it. You feel me? Like Going through that. Knock quick. yourself out. <laughs> Knock yourself out. So you say, you say you really look up to your older sister, Frida. Oh, she Pisces like me, man. We've been <laughs> we've been the weird ones in the family my whole life. Yeah, exactly. So it's like. You know, with all these, you know, people and your your older siblings, especially as the youngest, I can relate to this. Your older <laughs> siblings who out here killing it, doing their thing, ambitious. You know what I'm saying? Persevering through challenges. You know what I'm saying? You got to come correct. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So yeah. Like, so, like, to, to, to finish this up, was, like, a, a, like, the reason you make music, right? And it's, like, you be honest about this. Is it is it, like, okay, I got a lot of expectations to prove myself. Or was there something deeper? Because you, you, you started singing. You said you did choir in church Dude, like a long I mean, time ago. Yeah. For, like, okay. So music is in your... You, you yeah. have the tools. You definitely have the tools, yeah. right? But, like, what was the point where it's like you got the, like, oh, I want to do music. I'm pa- You know what I'm saying? I'm passionate about music. I and how say. did that tie into, like, <laughs> the expectations of, like, living up to... Or whatever of, like, your older siblings? You know what's funny about that? So, so honestly, I've... Like, my mom and dad mu- the, did music, and my dad used to, too. Like, he used to rap, my mom used to sing. So, music been so around me my whole life. Like, I I got videos, a little, little me. We used I to saw, call I ourselves. I saw that video. Yeah. You singing some Michael Jackson? Yeah, we, hey. Can it be? I did something like that. I was like, like we it was five of us. Last days was Jackson. I'm like, fuck it, we the Jackson. No. <laughs> Merch, I was on there. Yeah, they used to sing background, I was little Michael. I was like, <laughs> that's adorable. <laughs> I'm crying. And you're, so, going, you're going to need to leak some, leak some footage of that. Man, oh my. I only, I feel like I only got the one. I know it's some just hanging around somewhere. But I was like, yeah. I was like, forever, I love music. But when Zion and Frida started um, back in 13, 14, I'm going to say, and, you know, they older than me. I just remember, like, just watching that. And I was like, man, like. Like, they just hopped on this shit, but they, it's so, they so real already. Like, and for me, at the time, it was still so, such a, like, a pastime for me that I understood, like, I wasn't there with it yet. And so what's funny about it is I knew I could do it because if I'm being a hundred, what, the thing I always thank my parents for is that they gave us confidence in ourselves. Like, we... For me, it's what you dedicate your energy to. You know, it's not about whether or not you can do it. It's what you want to do. But I knew that when I did it, it needed to feel like like some shit that I that was real to me. You know, and so when I was ready, when I was really getting ready to make this music, it was like yeah, like on one hand, I had already made music with Zion, but that's some shit I'ma let I'ma let y'all find some fossilized shit. You know, I would, you know, seeing hooks and all that shit. Um, and I was just like, this is cool and everything. And I like my voice. It's not me, though. And what I love so much about Zion's music and Jalen's... Uh, Frida's music. Can't fuck up. <laughs> and with Zion and Frida's music is that um, it was so authentically done. Like, you know, on such a deep level. Like, when I listen to... Um, Bloom, okay, it was Bloom was the first time it was so, it was, it was so, like, conversational in that way, 
um, and I was helping Zion like curate the project, like with the track listing and shit. I was just like, I know this, like I know this, this where this is coming from, where where you felt this, and you would feel it having this conversation with him. So I was like, and with Frida too, like she would back up everything she fucking say in the track, and I love that about her. And I was like, if I need a, if I'm if I'm talking my shit, it's my shit. It ain't nobody else shit. So I needed to I needed it to be my shit when I came out and said it. So I was like, it was part of why it was part of why I needed to be in my twenties when it dropped. I realized. It's cause, you know, as a little kid, you just imitating the the adults around you. I was like, I felt like my own person for the first time in on a deep level. And I was like, that shit, that's deep to me, cause Honestly, everything I wrote, the words I picked and everything, I'm like, I know exactly where my head was when I wrote this shit because it felt like a journal entry. <laughs> so that's what kind of gave you, like, the confidence. Yeah, the confidence was the authenticity for me. You know, when you know some shit is real, it's hard to lie. <laughs> like, uh, scientifically, it's harder to lie than to tell the truth. Motherfuckers literally sitting there looking around and shit sweating stuttering when you when you say some shit that's real to you it's it feels real no that's facts yeah and i can tell you really value like authenticity <laughs> and honesty because so I'm, I'm bumping i'm bumping vultures <laughs> right i'm bumping gardens and then i'm bumping secrets but especially gardens and vultures <laughs> you mention a lot uh, you talk a lot about snakes you talk a lot about like leeches and parasites and stuff like that and that's like the antithesis of like being honest that's like the opposite yeah. of being a, of authentic because an authentic person is all about showing up as you are yeah you know like that's what like like honestly and i don't i'm not gonna you know call nobody out for nothing but for me honestly that's where that comes from is like I can feel when somebody just felt somebody else's energy and they hopped onto that shit. And that shit bothers me. Because I'm like, you know, it's like, it's like motherfuckers who ask you for a feature but don't have a song made already. It's like, don't come to me with no feature if you wasn't finna have this song anyway. That's a disrespect on me. You know what I'm saying? And that's how I felt. Like, with a lot of shit, it's like, you, motherfuckers will literally watch you do some shit and they'll feel inadequate because they're not. And they'll and they'll hop right onto it. Like literally, it'll now be a part of their identity that they were a part of what you did. And that shit, I was like, that shit disgusting. <laughs> I was like, it is so funny uh rapping about it, because I'm like, man, I ain't never beat nobody ass over that, but it was but as I was writing it, I'm like, like, you know what I'm saying, you know, you make a face and shit, I'm like. That shit disgusts me, bro. <laughs> but yeah, like, yeah, I guess that that's real for me. Is authenticity is like, I love when the way I always put writing is like, if you were to draw a painting, right, you're never going to be able to get all the details because like the truth of reality is the closer you look at shit, it's just more like if you zoom in on my skin, you'll see the cells. Um, the truth of a painting, the truth of a song, the truth of words is you can't capture everything. Mm -hmm. So what was it so important for you to capture? Like what I love about pictures of sunsets is the sun being pretty with the orange around it isn't what <laughs> makes the picture. What makes the picture is the shadows, the contrast, the life around it, the way it reacts to it, right? For me with my music, it's like, the words I'm saying are the words I'm saying. If somebody else said them, they wouldn't have any significance. But the significance is the way I reach for it, is the fact that it came to my head at all. The fact that this is what hell salience here. That's what's real to me. So, yeah, like, my favorite artists, they'll say whatever the fuck they say, but what they say, you know the fuck they lived it. Like, that's some shit that's real to me. <laughs> No, that's no. Thanks for sharing that. That's like, first of all, you're like one of the few people who made me like look at my own like wall art. 
Like people don't pay attention to that. I was there until now. <laughs> no, like, the treehouse. <laughs> yeah, no cap. So it's like they just ignore that. It's like pay attention. I know I be wearing bright colors, but they don't. They don't look at the walls. But thank you for I was drawing like, that analogy between like my art that meant a lot. I'll say it's funny to me. Like, okay, you got dreads, right? Um, Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Me and you got dreads. Right, right. One thing I, I think about all the time is my dreads aren't even lengths. Mm -hmm. And some of them are like, like, like this, this one right here is. It's short as hell. Yeah, this, this is, this is a little baby right I in my face, this right? Rugby. Exactly. <laughs> right, right, right. They tell stories. Mm -hmm. If somebody was to, when you imagine your dreads, you didn't imagine them like that. Hell no. But they told a story. That's who you are is your hair. Um, so yeah, when I walk in, like when I walked in here, everything immediately, my eyes are just darting around because I'm just like, I'm just learning about you in the most subtle ways. Like I love this fucking poster behind me. <laughs> um, but it's really beautiful to me when I get such a deep, like, like I feel like I really just saw like the filter somebody sees the world through, through their music. That's that's really deep to me. That that's what's deep to me about art. I don't give a fuck about what happens, what was said. I care about why it was said and how it was expressed. You know, because no. that's that's what separates us. You know, that, that's what makes that's what separates us from machines is the intent and the perspective. You know, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm having a moment. no, no, no. <laughs> that that's the. <laughs> Breathe that in. That's that deep flow state. You feel me channeling that shit in. Before we, you feel me, before we go into the wormhole, um, we got kombucha in this mug. Oh my God. I saw yeah. you ogling that. You feel me? I'll say Pink Lady been my favorite flavor of apple, so I've been staring at that shit for a Pink minute. Lady. I didn't know, I know there's like a Lady Apple or Granny Smith Apple. I knew there was a Pink yeah, yeah, my dad gets pink. My dad's favorites, I think, are Honeycrisp and Pink Lady. I know Honeycrisp. Okay. Yeah, he grabs those a lot. I love those. Well, you feel? Are you trying to indulge? Oh hell yeah! In the amenities? Yeah. Ah. <laughs> I told you we gonna be all right. We got long ass legs. Lakey you feel bastards me? Here, Lakey man. Style, you feel me? <laughs> you feel me? Um, I got you. Ooh, I didn't expect it to be this color, but I guess apple. Ah, yeah. you know, I've never tried this flavor, so this is um, you feel me? This 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 first a test time, run. best time type <laughs> shit. You feel me? I got you down. What's that? <laughs> nah, um, we in this mug. So uh, you feel me? I don't know if you've drank before, but <laughs> I'm twenty on me. He said salute. He followed the rules. Okay, good boy. <laughs> when I was twenty. Um, anyway, um. Uh, <laughs> What fine kids your parents are crazy. Oh, Yo, but. this is, this is, it's really apple. Like that, that's, it's, yeah. It tastes legit. Yeah, it tastes like I'm biting this shit. <laughs> it's, it's almost like vinegar. Mm-hmm. But like, without the less tangy. Or like less, yeah. like, abrasively sour. Yes. Oh, I kind of like it though. I like the feel of it. We're going to give you a cup too. I know you're thirsty. <laughs> I'm just scared of shit. I'm like, I don't want to say that. I, I know you want some. Now you Gucci. I mean, we've established that you're here. Go ahead. Yes, they say, I'm afraid of the germs. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, we got celery. We got cucumbers in this mug. You feel me? Life is great. We getting greener. We getting leaner. We're okay. not getting meaner, but I'm finna bite into this turmeric. Finna bite into this turmeric. I'm feeling it. <laughs> Listen. Straight from the, the soil of India. Mm. You know? That's where it's native. India. That's where they make curry powder out of. Mm. Wow, it really tastes just like the. Mm hmm. Oh, I no curry here. It's a real ugly flavor. <laughs> it's an ugly flavor. Um, There's a there's a chemical in it. Turmeric has um, it's curry. It's, I can't think of the name, but it has that thing inside of it that is an antioxidant and it kills. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, see, I knew turmeric and ginger immediately. I said this looks like ginger because I used to grind it up. I used right. to make these teas back when I wrestled because mm. you, it, I mean, you you play rugby, right? Hell yeah. Always sore. Yeah. Always sore. Like, you only feel good after a warm-up. Mm. I used to always drink these, like, dips-ass teas and I would get home to the crib just to, just to deal with that. Mm. Well, 
so let's 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 talk more about that. So we were talking, you know, off off record. You were mentioning, you know, how you did wrestling. Mm-hmm. And then I loved how you, you know, just dive into that. So what what was your experience with wrestling? <laughs> so I don't like talking my mouth. Oh, you straight. I mean, listen, the treehouse is here for it. <laughs> but <laughs> Yeah, no, nah, so honestly, um when I was in eighth grade, my brother, my oldest brother, Nate, for the first time, he made it like really deep in the um the NCAA D one um national tournament. Wow. Like really deep. He placed uh he placed fifth that year. Yeah, fifth. And I just remember watching him that whole year just like this is just like so inspiring. Like honestly, like it was you know, like Nate already had like kids and shit. Like it was like this motherfucker was out there feeding his family and shit. And I was like I just wanna feel that. You know? I want to feel that energy there, like, just in everything. So, when I got to high school, I was like, I just want to try it out. I want to feel it. And also, I told you on the phone call, I was an angry motherfucker. <laughs> I was always an angry motherfucker. Be- especially before I hit my growth spurt. Because anybody who know me from middle school... The Napoleon complex, they call me. <laughs> oh, <my> God. <laughs> anybody who know me from middle school, I was about, like, 5 to an 8th grade. Angry as hell. Know it all. Hyper energetic. Real fucking energetic. Pleasant because I was so energetic while I wasn't mad. <laughs> so when I got to high school, I was just like, I need an outlet. And also, I need something to direct my energy towards so I have a focus for class. Um, and I hopped in. And I was just like, immediately. You just, so so quickly, you just get pushed to your limit in such a way where it's like, you either say you you done or like, you gonna find something new in you. And that's like, that was like a really intoxicating feeling for me because it was just like, you really feel stronger as a person when you when you see yourself at your lowest. You know what I mean? And that, that was a feeling I just craved because in wrestling, it's like everything. You would be so tired. You would be so sore. You would be scared. Like, you would be not even so much scared of getting hurt, but scared of losing, scared of losing in front of everybody. Scared of losing damn near naked in front of everybody. You know what I'm saying? Like, on some real shit. So, I'm, honestly, what's so funny to me about wrestling that's different than, like, every sport, not every sport, I say other fighting sports are similar, is that there is nobody on earth but you. And so, like, when you hooping, you can hide behind that nigga who got a handle. Like, you ain't got to have a handle because your cousin got a handle. He can figure that shit out for y'all. When you go out there and you wrestling, Every single thing you didn't do, you see it so quick, and they see it. So when I will look at an opponent, I'm like, he picked up that left leg kind of slow. I'm attacking that. Shit fucked up, but that's how he was looking at me. <laughs> um, and what I loved about it was you would just hit moments of complete fight or flight, and you would get comfortable with that feeling. And so what I loved about wrestling in particular was that it just showed me, like, how do you feel when when everything just come up on you? Wrestling, you don't got no personal space. They'll take that shit away from you. You got to earn your own personal space. How do you feel when you're out of control you need to fight for? How do you feel when no one's going to give you a reset to cool it down? How do you feel when, when you just up against the wall on some shit? And honestly, it made me love that feeling because I found out how strong you get when you feel it. Like... Man, I lost matches when I wasn't scared when I walked into them. Because it's like what I said on the phone. What I realized is excitement and anxiety and fear, that they're all intertwined. It's just the placement of them. So if I told myself before I hopped on this roller coaster, this is exciting, this is fun, then I'm scared as shit, but I'm having fun. And it was the same way on the mat. It's like, if I came out there too cool, I wasn't scared, I'm slow. I can't wake up. I'm sluggish. I lose. If I come in there too scared, I gas out. I get tired. I'm overwhelmed. But if I understand, like, if I feel that fear and understand how to use it, like, it's a great feeling. So it's something that I that I keep with me all the time because, like, when I went to, it was like, well, you you brought it up, but I feel like I'm gonna take the minute off it. Yeah, when Zion and um, Pat show, I didn't go there to perform. 
Motherfucker got shut down by some hating ass police. <laughs> by some hating ass police. But yeah, I didn't go there to perform, but I was like, fuck it. I got vultures. Like I my songs are up, so you can get to them. And I just downloaded that unreleased shit on my phone. And I'm here right now. And we can do this shit right now. So what I love about wrestling is moments like what my moment was supposed to be with so much preparation on stage, with all my family around me, with me in my perfect fit. I'm like, fuck it. We outside, we in the cold right now. I don't know these niggas. Ain't never did this shit before. Didn't rehearse. I'm ready. Anyway. And that's a feeling I love is like, if for wrestling will force you to get out of your own way. It's like a meditation of sorts. It's like you focus on one singular thing and just learn how to be present in that. And I feel like that's, it's so many different ways to get that lesson, but it's such an important lesson to learn. You know? Mm. No, thanks for sharing that, man. I love how you drew that analogy, you know, between like just being present and how that carried over into your performance. Yeah. You know, and it's like, and I, I do want to also, you know, tie into how you mentioned how like you're paying attention to detail. Like you, you brought out, you know, this wall art, <laughs> how it's like, thank you again for that. But like, you see the sun, you know, obviously it's the sunset, you know, but like this picture wouldn't be shit without the contrast, the shadow, the clouds, you know what I'm saying? And it's like going back to wrestling, you know what I'm saying? It's like that contrast of like, okay, you know, okay, I'm prepared, but it's like, are you ever fully prepared? No. It's like that, with the song. It's like you said, if art, you analyze it, you zoom in, it's always more. So it's like, even it's like not being prepared doesn't mean like you come in willy nilly. You yeah. know, you're still conditioning, you still, you feel me? But it's like at that moment, you gotta fuck all that. It's that if I'm not prepared, if the little shit, if I didn't watch the tutorial, none of that matters. Be present, what's gonna happen is gonna happen. So I love how you tied that into how that gave you confidence on that random night. But it's yeah. like, I'm going to never be ready. Yeah. Fucking, I'm, I got my song. I got my gardens. I got my vultures out. I'm going to just do it. Fuck it. <laughs> so I love how you how you do that comparison. And I love that. Like, that's that's some real shit in general that I learned is, gee, what, what Earl Sweatshirt said that shit. He said, I learned that, that way mama, better than I could plan. I fucking love that line. Like, that's literally one of my single fa- There's a couple of lines. Mavi said, I can't write all the time because I can't lie. Love that line. Um... <laughs> I learned to adapt way better than I could plan. It's a line I sit with from time to time because you can sit here and plan out the details all the time. Like every single, if I plan out, you know, at any point, it's like, damn, I just rolled my ankle. Like, you know, I was going to go on the run this morning and that was going to be how I, you know, everything is so meticulous. Everybody got they, got they rituals and shit. You always, you can find so many reasons for shit to be fucked up. You just got to learn how to roll with shit. And honestly, like, I mean, that's some shit I learned in general. That's some shit I learned from my mama and shit. That's some shit I learned from my daddy. But, like, learning how to just, just let shit, like, there's a balance. Somebody said surrender and, what was it, like, surrender and control. There's a balance between that and that's flow. It's like you got to learn how to let go of what you need it to be. But also express what you want it to be. And there's somewhere in between. And that's where you find your power. And that, that's, what's, that's what's been real for all of this shit for me. Like, every time I sit down to write a song, I don't stress about finishing the song. Because I can always finish the song. But I do sit down and say, I'm going to write this song today. Even if I don't finish it, I'll write it as much as I can. I'll write whatever I have. And if I don't have it all today, it'll come again later. But that it's important to me to understand. And I, I mean, like wrestling is another thing. Like, yeah, you drill shit all fucking day for that reason. Because you won't even see it necessarily what you did, how your preparation came into play. But what you feel is, did you, tr- like, did you trust this process? Did you, did you go with it? Even as you don't know what the end result is and you can't directly control that shit. And learning how to do that keeps you steady for me. Mm. No, that's a great skill to have. It's a vital <laughs> skill. And I feel like, I don't want to say a lot of musicians or artists cheat themselves from that experience. And, and you could say it could be how you were raised. Or it could just be your conditions at the time. You or know, it could be your confidence. It could be so many things. 
Exactly. And then a lot of times people say confidence, right? Like you say a lot of your confidence, you know, you say you, you're thankful for your parents for, for making you all believe yeah. in yourself, yeah. right? A lot of people don't have that, you know what I'm saying? But a lot of people can still get it through stuff like wrestling, through stuff yeah. like whatever they, football or rugby, you feel me? My, my thing that I, I'm interested to ask is, so I went to, I went to university, right? Mm-hmm. Prior to that, I, I'm like the complete, like if you drew a line of like, from like origin to conclusion, right? It wouldn't make sense, basically. Like my <laughs> life up until like college was like the typical, you know, parents from Africa, go to school, get good grade, graduate, get money. That mm-hmm. was like, it was no art. Nobody in my family was really like, like I, almost the opposite of you all. Like very like, you know, grades heavy, stem, stuff like this. Stem exactly. Shit, yeah. You know, it's just like, let's be secure. Mm-hmm. Let's be safe. You know, arts is risky. Mm-hmm. You know, my beautiful parents also aspire to say I could do whatever they want, do whatever I want. But at the same time, it was like, but go to school though. And like, they were really heavy on that. You know what I'm saying? And, but they, they, they did instill in me like the importance of persevering. So following things all the way through. So yeah. that is a good quality I take though. But so I went to college, you know, I got the engineering degree, blah, blah, blah. It was after that, that I had some, some of those experiences where like with the wrestling, the wrestling kind of, you got, you're lucky you got that early on where it's yeah. like at a young age, you know, in high school, you know, you had that, you're experiencing stuff like, okay, I can't escape this here in my personal space. I gotta, so you're understanding like these things where it's like, like ancient Greeks and like ancient traditions in Africa and stuff. They would do like these coming of age things where like men would yeah, go away from the tribe and so find themselves. But look, really hard things like you know what's interesting about stuff? that. Other animals do that shit too, like wolves mm. and, and hyenas and shit. They'll say you gotta leave the pack now. You gotta leave the pack. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna let you come back to that. My bad. Come yeah. to the pack, leave the pack. Now, I remember that because I, I do want to hear where you go with that. Where I'm going with <laughs> this is, do you think that right? If you didn't have that challenging like, you know, confidence and like greediness that wrestling taught you. Right. Do you think that you would have gone, you know, to go to college? Right. And then just have the complete confidence in yourself to kind of choose that. Oh, I'm taking music and committing to it. Do you, do you think the re- without the wrestling, you still would have come to that conclusion that like, oh, my fortitude in this is like I'm committed and I'm going to I'm going to risk it all to follow my music passion without rest wrestling. What do you think? Do you think you still would have come to that? Conclusion? Hey, you know, what's so interesting about that. I don't know. Genuinely. Like, and it's funny because I, I identify so much with the idea that, that like, I know myself and yada, yada, yada. But I don't know. I remember watching, um, I forget who said it, but I I don't really understand, like, red pill shit and incel shit. Uh-oh. Never really re- resonated <laughs> with me. <laughs> I just made a video. Triassum filter dropped in my day. Cry. It never really resonated with me growing up, or even now, really. You go zero, boy. <laughs> That's the corniest shit on earth, bro. I'm sorry. <laughs> I roasted the fuck out of him. Anyway. I'm crying. But it never really resonated with me, partially because I my mama is a role model of mine, and partially because both of my sisters are, right? Um, but, like, what I learned, what somebody said that was really interesting is a lot of men haven't been taught how to... And not just men, people. A lot of people have not been taught how to pursue things, how to set their intentions, how to set out for things without the expectation and entitlement that it'll work out. And that's such an interesting thought to me because what I understand about wrestling and not just wrestling, anything, anything on earth that you pursue is there is no guarantee ever. And not only is there no guarantee, there's no blame. Like there's no fault here. What's true is you, whatever happens is whatever happens. And that's always the case. Like you, you can't never control that shit, but what you can always do is pivot is see, see how you're going, see how it's going, make decisions and reassess. And I realized that so many people get caught up on it didn't work. What the fuck? Right? Like, so what's funny that I used to think about, this used to be one of my regrets, um, when I was like four or five, my parents, uh, they put me in wrestling because around this time when Nate, like Nate was starting to have success and everything. And they're like, man, Kari would probably be good at this, you know, yada, yada, yada. And I quit real early and it wasn't because I didn't enjoy it. It was because I lost. 
I lost my first match and I was like, I, I like that shit fucked with my head. I was like, I don't lose what the fuck. You know what I'm saying? I can't do this no more. Right. And it's funny as a thought, cause I realized, yeah, it's like, I, my assumption is that as you get older, you get level with the fact that, that it's nobody's fault, the results of life and the results of everything. But I learned, niggas don't learn that shit. And like, that shit's insane in my head. But I don't know, like, but genuinely also, I don't know. I mean, what I understand fully is some people will take failure directly as reason to just say, well, that's why you don't commit or you don't this, this or that. So yeah, I don't know, that's a funny, I really like that question. No, yeah. No, and just even thinking about it more, like, you know, just like... <clears throat> so I've been snacking like a motherfucker. I, <laughs> I really like green shit. Get your greens in now. I swear to God, bro. I'm near a start ordering shit. Who knows? Future treehouse endeavors? Maybe. <laughs> I might have a chef thing. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love how, you know... You, I'm good. You added that little tidbit. No, you're cool. Make sure you in front of the mic. I mean, yeah. Okay, my bad. Yeah, yeah, no, you good. I know it gets. You can always move it. Oh, but no, stay there though, cause the camera. Right, right. Yeah, I'm, I'm cool. I, I just ain't want to make the uh, uh sound. No, you do. No, that's fine. Fuck the sound. Fuck the. <laughs> Listen. I'm your butt. Ba 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 ba. I'm back here petty. This is my podcast. So, no, I like how with the wrestling. You, you added that tidbit of how, like, you started when you were four and you lost the first time. I love that you, you said that because people need to hear that. People need to hear, even if you're completely destroyed by something the first time. And I don't know, this may be the reason why, like, the victory felt so good when you did win later on, along the line in wrestling. Because mm-hmm. that's almost like reclaiming. And I mentioned this this concept on the last episode. And um, shout out Lex. But she was talking about this kind of reclaiming your karma, or like, or reclaiming the bad things that happened to you, right? Or reclaiming your L's. I saw, a, I saw a snippet of that. Yeah, that was such a powerful thing, and it's like I just like came up with the word. It's like we talk so much about like, you know, protecting your energy. You feel me? And like avoiding conflict and stuff, right? And like kind of putting yourself in a shell so that you know a boundary, blah blah, which are mm-hmm. important to an extent, right? Mm-hmm. But failure is important, and conflict is necessary because not only do you get a lesson from that. Sometimes the lessons come years later. It's like an investment. It's like a golden egg. You know what I'm saying? Like you plant that or that seed. You plant it in the soil. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? You don't hear a seed grow. You don't hear a tree grow. You know what I'm saying? You just you just add to it. You know what I'm saying? You add fertilizer. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Get the cow, come shit on it. You feel me? You know what I'm saying? You get some of that water. You pour it, you know what I'm saying? Depending on the plant, it might take years. You know what I'm saying? Broccoli might grow tomorrow. Papaya tree might take two years. It's a different plant. And sometimes but they should still grow for years and clean just die. And you won't have any reason for it. You did, you'll have did everything right. Sometimes it'll just stop raining. SOL, done raining. That's it. Like, and what's funny about, okay. So, like, I had a rough patch over the last couple of years with shit. Just uh, mentally and everything. Emotionally and all that. Um... One thing I learned that's that's big for me is appraisal, as in the meaning you give things. That's like the tool. Like literally, that's that defines what an experience actually is to you, to me. Like it's not naming. There's people I know who decided to turn into demons because a girl broke their heart, and it's like that's me. I know, I, yeah, I, I would say it's enough people for where that niggas don't even need to feel singled out for some shit like that. What I understand fully is shit happened, but the way you take it is complete. Like, like for me, for me, it was a lot of shit that bothered me growing up. Like, when we, um, you know, like, we was broke a couple of years, and we went from living in the house to living in an apartment, and, like, was, like, out of the school district, all kinds of shit. And it was just, it was a rough patch then, because the vibes was just fucked up, and it was fucked up for, like, four years. But I always think about it, I'm like, honestly, that shit taught me, like, it taught me to adapt. I mean, it taught me you just gonna, 
it taught me you don't know what you got, taught me not to take shit for granted, and it taught me to adapt. And I mean, I see it with niggas who have horrible, messy breakups is, ah, oh, what a bad day got to go. Like, people be having quick breakups. And I be thinking, the band-aid just got took off because that shit wasn't going to work out anyway. Um, I got cut from the wrestling team when I was down in Mizzou. That was some shit that at the time I was like, at the time, I just was kind of like, huh. L literally. Mizzou is D1, right? Yeah, Mizzou is D1. What I remember, what I recall that my feeling on it being was, it's not that it happened and that that's a bad thing. It just was such an unexpected turn of events for me that I smooth didn't know how to react for a long time, you know? But I always think about it. I'm like, I don't want to be in Missouri right now. And I wouldn't have wanted to be in Missouri at that time. I would have been away from my family for a long time. And I wouldn't have been able to come home for Thanksgiving and, and, and Christmas. And I knew that. They said that at practice. And I was like, man, in the winter, my dad got extremely sick like nearly died levels of sick it would have really fucked with me if i wasn't home for that shit and also i'm glad that i got to be home and just got to a i'd learn i picked up a guitar when i got home <laughs> which is a funny thought you know but also b like just a lot of my relationships with people and a lot of the shit and the decisions i've had to make have just been very crucial in that time so i could say basically damn i like this is fucked up but it's like I mean, fucked up it's just different <laughs> you just you just saw a different side of life and what's weird to me that i i see a lot is that i feel like people expect something out of life to a point where they block their blessings because they don't let it they don't let they self be blessed you know what i mean they chase a blessing but they don't allow it what's that they don't let they self learn from it yeah, and not even just learn, like, allow, like, like literally just allow the opportunity into their life because they're so set on what it will be. So what I realized my parents' model on shit was, as far as raising us is, is that we want y'all to be secure and stable and shit, so go to school, go to college. But also, I mean, what the fuck is it going to do for y'all if we decide that because y'all want dreams, that's some weird shit, that's some weird, difficult shit, that we gonna say, no, nah, y'all can't do it. Well, now you're alienating yourself from your children. Now shit's difficult. And, and not only is shit difficult, they're alone while shit's difficult. And so what I realize is, oh, shit's just gonna be difficult. And shit's gonna be weird. And shit's gonna happen in ways you didn't think it was gonna happen. That's life. And... I'm okay with that, <laughs> you know, that's, you know, and, and honestly, I'm glad I learned that shit early. Um, I wasn't alive for it, but I'm like a house got hit by a truck when I, or I was alive for it. I don't remember it. I don't even, I don't even know if you remember that. I definitely remember that. I called it. That shit. Zion called it. I, I be forgetting Zion's a prophet. So everything Zion say tend to happen. <laughs> uh, when Zion was, if, if five. you was five, I was two. Mm -hmm. When Zion was five, he said something along the lines of meteorite. Meteorite finna hit this fucking house. Um, my oldest brother Nate had football practice that day, flag football practice. Mama yeah. was like, "We should really leave these kids home. I don't feel like doing all this shit." But she took all five of us, and thank God, cause a motherfucking truck swerved into our house that day. And what's funny about that is. So my formative, my formative years in a lot of ways is like, oh, we was moving around a lot. And then finally we, we landed to this house on the cul-de-sac. And then I thought I would stay there for a while. But really, however, so many years later, I mean, I was, what, five when we moved into the house in Salt Village. And then I was 10 when we moved to Crete. And I only stayed in Crete for a couple of years before we moved again. I was like, oh, this is what life do is it give you new looks when you ain't expecting it. So I'm okay with that. You know what I mean? And honestly, I, I think I think that that's... I think it's power in that shit. Because when you get new looks, you get new perspectives. That only, that only adds to you, you know? Wow. No, like, that's crazy. And, and it's like, at the time, you don't realize how monumental 
these looks, these new looks yeah. are until they become looks. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and it's going back to what you said about like people don't even allow blessings to come into their life because they're so stuck on like everything going by plan. Everything happening the way it's supposed to be. And it's like obviously you don't purposely want to put yourself but like your house getting hit by a trailer. Obviously you don't want to purposely you <laughs> Don't know, drive no cars into your house. <laughs> right. That's not the plan. Yeah. But going back to like the concept of flow you mentioned how it's that balance, that Venn diagram between control and letting go, mm -hmm. right? And sometimes that control part gets too top heavy. We want to control too much, right? And you get out of flow and you get out of balance. Thing that bothered me the most about a verse that well, niggas well, well, do. Right, oh, my that. bad. Go oh, ahead. And I got to go back to the animal thing. You're, you should remember that. I'm going to go to the animal thing. But I do want to... Follow up with that though. Mm -hmm. How does it, how did that compare? Like, um, cause you know what I'm saying, I'm glad your your dad is doing better now, and mm -hmm. I can imagine like that's a huge, you know, what I'm saying decision you made. You know what I'm saying? That's that's a decision that you know you'll live with. That's that's a decision that like if that resonated with you, mm -hmm. you won't regret it. You know. Yeah. But you said after that period, at the time, you may not have like you know obviously like D1 wrestling. That's a big that's a big thing to think about, right? Mm -hmm. Off record, you mentioned how at DePaul, you feel me, you, you face another big decision where it's like you were writing an essay. And I remember that story. And it's like a 3,000 or 2,000 word essay. But then like you write a 5,000 word essay about some other shit. And I was like. And you're like, why am I here? Why the fuck am why I the here? Fuck am it I was here, right? literally, I should have named that shit, why the fuck am I here? And, and really Do you still it. have that, that essay? I might, dude. Man, you took. Like, My notes is a. Put it on your wall and just like cement and like this this changed my life. But <laughs> I do want to ask though, how did like I guess you know leaving Mizzou from the wrestling team, you feel mm -hmm. me? D one. How did that compare to kind of that feeling of because you said you kind of into the low point, you know, kind of realizing that how am I gonna balance school and like my music? How did that those two low points kind of compare? I'll say this: when I was at Mizzou. My issues primarily was just that was that I felt really like isolated from a lot of different shit. I mean, partially because I was just six hours from home, like, you know what I'm saying? Um, but for me, the low point was like, I just need to get through this shit so that I could, you know, so that the joys and, and, and like the greatness of what I'll do will hit me, right? And then when I got cut, I was like, what the fuck? Like, literally in my head, it's like, yo, what the fuck? Was it because of the, um, you chose to not stay during the... No, no, no. I got cut because I, I wasn't good enough. I mean, right. I, I'll keep it simple. I mean, I was, it, it was plenty of shit. Honestly, I'm in a room with the best fucking niggas in the country. Like, it is what it is on that. I've been wrestling for four years. The fact that I was in that room was a blessing. Um, But... The thing, the issue of it, so when I was in high school, I realized, like, it's something I look back on, and it's really interesting in my head. I wasn't happy for a long period of time, but I was very distracted. So I kind of just gave my happiness to wrestling. I was like, all this other shit, like, whatever's going on back home, this, this, that, and the other, it is what it is. We, we're going here. Like, like we, this is where my energy is, and I'm okay because this is what that is. And I realized I couldn't enjoy my summers when I was in high school because I wasn't wrestling. And I was like, oh, this is a drug. Like, I realized in my senior year, I'm like, this is a drug. Like, like this is like a sex addiction. This is gambling. This is beer. This is crack. This is the same shit. This is motherfuckers saying, basically, they don't have anything, so they'll just give them like like they'll they'll just decide to zone out, and so I knew that because I I always think a lot, but I just was like fuck it, we ain't gotta be happy because I'll be happier when I get to this place. And what I realized, honestly, is said place doesn't exist. I mean, when I when I made it to state my senior year, I was like, this has been the goal for so long, and it was nice. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, and yeah, 
But I still decided I was just going to buy into that because I didn't know what the fuck to do with myself if I didn't. So when I was in, um, so when I was in Mizzou, it was a very dark cloud over just, well, what the fuck am I doing? But as I went home and I did the next semester uh, virtual there, I was like, well, fuck it. I'm a transfer. And when I transfer to DePaul, I'm just going to find out what the fuck I'm doing. And so the issue when I was at DePaul that was a different but still felt like like a different feeling was I was frustrated because I didn't know why I wasn't happier. You know what I mean? Like it was like it was like a period in time where it's like funny because I'm I'm like I'm academically inclined. You know what I'm saying? It's easy for me to do well in class. I'm I'm somebody who talks to the teachers a lot and enjoys class. But when I was at DePaul, I was like, I was doing well. And then the moment anything, like the moment actual life hit, I was like, this is a bunch of bullshit. And it wasn't, this is a bunch of bullshit, but it's hard to proceed as though this isn't a bunch of bullshit. So like my auntie Joan passed. Um, My condolences. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was a while ago now. But back in the fall, she had uh, passed. And just at the time, I was just like, like, it's not even that I'm so sad about it, more so that it's a, um, it very much dissociates me from what I'm doing right now. Like, it's very much a, what is the word? Like, a vibe check, like a perspective shift. Like, you ever have, like, a feeling where you just, it's almost like an out-of-body experience on your whole life type of thing, where it's like, whoa, what am I doing? <laughs> and that was the feeling. It was like, I couldn't. I, I, it was like I, I I couldn't get up for class after that because I was like this isn't what I this isn't where I should be right now, and you don't feel that like you feel that when you see when when people pass like you know because you because that that it makes you aware of shit like that, so um the rough patch there for me more so than anything was that I was just there and thinking like I don't know what I'm doing, and I'm not happy here. And I don't know how I'm about to be happy. And and after a while, I just I just had to realize like it's like everything is imperfect and everything. But I just had to realize like the deeper you the 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 things that make you happy are the things is is doing what you what you feel you should be, you know. And so the more I feel like I'm contradicting myself, that that's chaos for me. So honestly, yeah, like the start of this year, uh, 2022, in January, I was still at DePaul. I started my next semester. And I just remember there being this moment where it was like fight or flight. It was like, you can keep doing this shit and fail another semester. And this time you you might you might be in actual trouble with the school. You might you finna be losing money and shit or you can pivot. And it's like, what are you about to do? And so I was like, fuck it. We like, like I said, right after that, started writing, started doing everything. I just remember a moment where I had that moment and then I wrote, man, okay, yeah. So like in a span of a week, Secrets, the concept for Secrets, I like recorded it on voice memos. I was playing the guitar and I was singing. Then there was this shoot there was this video shoot that my brother and my homie Lee Maj did. And I literally just said, basically, fuck it, I need to get some pictures here. Don't even know why yet. Remember them pictures for the promotional material? Mm, under the tree and all that? Yeah, with the TVs and shit. Right. All of that, that day. So that was almost off of Lee Maj's and them. Yeah, that was their shit, but. We had, we had to make time for that shit. <laughs> <laughs> but. <laughs> it was some off the cuff shit for me, but it was like, this is what the fuck I need to be doing right now. It just kept being that feeling of, I need to be doing this right now. I need to be doing this right now. I need to be doing this right now. And it got to a point where it was like, nigga, you ain't done none of your homework. And we just talked about, you can't play this game this semester. And I was like, I can't be here right now. And it was so strong. It was like, this is some stupid shit for me right now. And not college is some stupid shit but college as i was doing it didn't make any sense anymore because i realized 
I know what I should be doing. I know what I should be giving my energy to. And this doesn't feed into that. It only it only takes away from it. So the reason why this like this this new shit I've been doing makes sense, and the reason why I have the the motivation to do it, I haven't missed an assignment this semester, is because I I need to. Like it's like oh this is how I'm gonna fund this shit. This is this is how I take this shit to the next level. It it feels like every part of me is moving in the same direction instead of instead of my ankle le lagging behind or some shit. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I, I guess for me it was it was two rough patches, but it was like it it just I just was learning a lot through them, and it it meant you know like like honestly, I feel like I'm I feel like it, it's even hard to imagine myself as like I was two years ago, you know, like like and it's funny because it's not it ain't that long ago, but. It really feels like that when when you just think like I remember shit I said and it don't it don't fit no more. Like I've outgrown that. <laughs> nah, like I'm just processing that. Like, <laughs> you know, everything you said, like resonates so heavy. Like, I feel like not only with me, but like, a lot of people can relate to that. You know, we got Zion. You feel me raising the hand. It's just. It's just like, that's real shit. Yeah. You know, and it's like, and it's like me personally, you know, I, like, I went through a phase and, and I love that you mentioned how like, you know, your auntie passing mm -hmm. was like a, okay, life is real. It was like a paradigm shift. That's the me? word, paradigm, paradigm shift. shift. That is a great word. Amazing word. And, and it's, it's a similar thing happened to me. And, and it's, I feel, I feel like everything, like I completely like, I, I felt that when you said like, it was like, what matters now? And it's like, so what happened with me was I was like a sophomore or fresh, so I was like my second semester sophomore year and my grand, first my grandfather passed like freshman year, but my, I still have my grandmother and I was more close to my grandma. And so that didn't hit me too bad. And he was like 95. Mm -hmm. um, like two years later, my grandmother passed away, probably from losing, you know, her husband and everything. That really hit me. And I remember like playing guitar, you know, when she was in the hospital. It was a really emotional thing. And I was like trying to be, I was going through this phase of like, you know, on a rugby team and like, um, you know, hanging out with all these frats and stuff. I was trying to be like tough and like fake macho. So I kind of like, like try to play it off like, oh, I'm not affected by that. Um, you know, whatever. But it, it did affect me. Like, yeah. I found myself, like you said, going back to distracting. I found myself being distracted. It's like, before that, like, I was very academically declined. Inc decline. Yeah. Decline. <laughs> <laughs> well, we gonna edit that out, though. No, we gonna keep it. That's what <laughs> Yeah, academic did decline. But I was very academically inclined. But it's like something after that, it's like, I don't know. I just lost, like, grades went down. I went through, like, a year of just, like, distractedness. You know what I'm saying? Like, grades dropped. I I'm having to muster energy to go to class. I'm not going to class. I'm just doing everything but like having that focus. Like I used to be, you know, on point. And it's like, I'm glad that you mentioned that because that brought clarity back into my life. Like, oh, these things, like when you keep them bottled up without a healthy outlet. See, the normal yeah. outlet is eat ice cream, go get distracted, go chase girls, right? You know what I'm saying? Go like, do, do, take drugs. That's like the normal thing, right? So that's what, that's, that's, that's what is what we see around us. I don't say it's normal, but that's what society does, right? But that keeps us from our purpose. That's what secrets was about for me. Is honestly, it's I ain't got secrets to hide from people, but but everybody puts on a face. Like like I'm a I always been an emotional person, and I also ain't never felt like a bitch in my life or nothing. But like I realized lately, damn, I put on the face like. Like there, for me, um, I wasn't a very social person my whole life. And I always say like partially it's because I got my family and they've been a, a strong base for me and everything. But also partially is because I got like strong issues of getting too close to people and knowing they're not going to be around. And that shit was like, I realized that that was some shit that that was like a thing for me for real. And I realized, like, yeah, everybody on Earth protects themselves so much from 
from this this demon in the closet that really ain't all that if you just let it out. You know? I'm sorry I cut you off, but No no, no. I was interested to where that would go. And and, and that's and I would I'd like to come back to that too, because we did talk about like demons in the in the closet. We also talked about monsters. That you're making create. monsters yeah. of things. And I feel like this podcast, after the rebranding, we're trying to find ways like to help a lot of young men out here who are lost, you know, just listless and just leaves in the wind. You feel me? And a lot of reasons, you know, in my experience, I was a leaf in the wind, right? And a lot of the the reason that it's like I'm still young, mm-hmm. but just kind of seeing, you know what I'm saying, like myself and you, I know I kind of had that aspect about me. I know like I had a similar kind of like confidence upbringing. I could have been on this much earlier. You feel me? Yeah. So I, I'm just offering a helping hand to people who are younger. It's just like, listen, you didn't have to go through all the phases I went through. You didn't have to do all these things. These things are great. <laughs> and then I can share these experiences with others. But they presented a lot of like unnecessary suffering for myself, for others, a lot of chaos. And, and I, I would really love to, to have a discussion about like, and just how people like they psych themselves out of doing something before they even do it. They give up before it even starts, right? Yeah, like I taught myself to play the guitar over the pandemic because I said, Oh, niggas got free time. <laughs> and I, I literally thought about that because I was like, Yeah, like honestly, it, it it's such a funny thing to me. Like the concept of failure is so interesting to me. Um it's it's not failure if you can pick it up and do it every single day. That's an opportunity. Every day is an opportunity to learn. And I'm like, and it's funny as a thought to me because I, I realize so many people cut themselves off from that because it's really, it's intimidating, A. And B, it's intimidating to view yourself as someone, like like to lose that, that confidence in yourself. Like I realize that that's a thing that I, I was, we talked about this the other day and I was saying, I don't understand what's so intimidating about learning for people and growing for people. I realized that part of it is that the task itself is intimidating. But to me, part of it also is the the ego in it all. It's like being shitty at something and, and having to be okay with being shitty at it, not, not viewing it as being shitty at it. Like I realized when, yeah, yeah, I, I don't even really, I don't know fully where I was going with that, but yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, no, like, just going back to that authenticity, you know, it's like, yeah. and even admitting that, like, I don't know where that's going. Some people will continue to go off on a tangent and cap, <laughs> and then, and it's like, that you that's not even you. That's not even something you would do. That's somebody else's experience. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So I appreciate even the honesty and calling yourself out, like, I don't know where this is going. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, just that integrity. You know, these are pillars that like when you see it you know it yeah. but it's like when you don't see it you think it's not important right and then you got to change your circle you know what i'm saying because it's like healthy people don't do that healthy people don't treat people like that healthy people don't yeah. you know foster right inauthentic behavior that's not like healthy friends call each other out when, yeah. they, when, they also, when they know that's not them, when they know they're doing something that doesn't align with who they know themselves to truly be. And remember how I said, we said this off the air too, peace is a, it's poison. Like mm. too much peace is poison. Really? Like I under, I, I, I've literally learned, like understood that now is that so many people in the pursuit of peace, the pursuit of comfort, they they completely just just let go of all opportunities for something better. To me. <laughs> no, that's a... No, like, that's literally the dilemma. Yeah. Like, today. That, that's the dilemma of the modern, like, 20-some young adult. It's just like, we have all these distractions. Drugs. You know, unlimited. Literally. Like, yeah. they're abundant. You can get them. You know, it used to be like you kind of had to know somebody who knew somebody, you know what I'm saying, who was cartel. Now, it like, ain't, ain't you can shit. talk to, you can go to Starbucks. The manager probably on the side. You feel me? So it's like drugs. We got endless entertainment, Netflix, 
We got you don't even gotta you don't even gotta walk to get food. Endless instant entertainment. Endless instant entertainment with no effort, just like yeah. nine ninety nine per month. You got porn. Not only the PG shit, you got like crazy shit. So mm-hmm. it's like it's, the, the the bar is constantly being raised and getting crazier and crazier. You have um Tinder. All these dating apps. You feel me? A lot of y'all don't get none on that either. But anywho, it's there. <laughs> no offense. Damn. Um, anywho, you know, cause yeah, listen, I just, let me let me go back. This is not a trust filter. <laughs> okay, anywho, you have we have these endless distractions, right? And this is the dilemma of the modern 21st century homo sapiens. It, 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 it is how do I, right, escape comfort in order to find my purpose? Because you found your purpose, right? Your purpose, you know you wanna do something with your music. You know you want to <laughs> or or like what what have you like found your deeper purpose you know, this? Cause I, I don't want to make assumptions. Like what what's your thought process on that? Honestly for me, I, I wouldn't even call it a purpose. I guess the mission statement of my music right now is you every like every piece of whatever you are can just be you. Like what I love about my music right now is that I do what the fuck I want in it. I sing in it, I rap in it, I, I may, you know what I mean? I play when I need to and all types of shit, but also like the subject matter. I can rap about beating somebody else cause that's some shit I feel. I can also rap about crying and shit cause that's also some shit I feel. And honestly, I feel like, I feel like so much of being a person, especially a black person, like high key in America, is you, you don't get a chance to be to be what what okay um Taye Salasa said this in uh, a TED talk she said mm-hmm. she said I insist upon my right to be multiple because she was an African immigrant but also but also but also but also like <clears throat> you are so many things and I literally feel like that's something that people catch themselves in so often is they find somewhere to give themselves this like. When I was an athlete, I didn't identify as an athlete. And as an artist, I hardly identify as an artist because I think everybody is an artist in their own, in in how they express it, you know? And I, I, I feel like, I feel like, I guess the mission statement of my music is be the shit and you can be the shit even if you suffer and even if you weak, even if you Emotional, even if you this this, if you scared, you can also be the shit, cause you the shit. <laughs> you can be the shit if you healthy. <laughs> mm-hmm. Motherfuckers don't know for some reason. That so yeah, I guess that's my purpose more so than anything. It's just, just it's just let be free. You know what I'm saying? To express yourself as you feel it. Mm-hmm. No, that's and that's that's good. And I feel like that question not to put you on the spotlight, cause it's like <laughs> who really knows. Yeah, your purpose is something that fluctuates. Your purpose is like, All the time. And, and, and like, thank you for even, you know, sure having you the confidence to tattoos. tackle that. That's, that's a big question. That's a, like, what's your purpose? Like, you know, shit, even me, like, it's like, it's just so many different avenues. It's hard to narrow it down. So like, that's a great answer. It's just like, you know what I'm saying? Like, there is no metric. I was like, I realized the reason I don't have any tattoos. What's that? It's the reason I, I don't have any tattoos, I realized. Same, me neither. It's because I love the opportunity to grow and change. Yeah, that's crazy. That's yeah. crazy. I, yeah, the, the more you talk, it's like we're like very similar. Yeah, that's like, the same reason I don't have never multiple opportunities. I've had people who wanted to tattoo me, had the needle on the spot. I'd be like, nah. I just like. Yeah, it's yeah. like, it's something Frida even hit me with. <laughs> you know, but she tatted the fuck up. Yeah. And I was like, and I love her tattoos mm-hmm. because it's just so much history all over her, you know? And that's such a dope thing to me. But for me, what I love about myself is that I can be so many things that I don't want to narrow that down to to this thing I, I resonated with. Because I don't, you know? No, I feel that. I feel that. No, it's just like, we have a lot of pressure. You yeah. know, we have a lot of expectations to kind of fit a script. You know, to kind of, okay, you look a certain way, you act a certain way, you do a certain thing, so let's put you in a box, you know? You, you know, you hang out with this crowd, you know, 
you think about this kind of thing, right? You have these set of hobbies, right? Mm -hmm. You're this kind of person. And it's like, the problem with that is people take that as like the end all be all when that's actually a means to an end. And, and it's yeah, like, I, I hate to use that word means to an end, right? Cause it sounds bad. like, it sounds like, you know, predatory. It sounds like yeah. opportunistic, right? But it's <laughs> like a means to an end for a good reason. It's a means to an end, the end being your like actual person, your actual purpose, right? I was watching this, it was a TED talk or a YouTube video and it was, it was talking about how like even the fuck ups or the little things you did throughout your life or like the yeah. little purposes. Like I went through a, a period of time where like I was gonna be the, like the, the biggest math nerd in my school, right? <laughs> and it was like for one year and I, and I did good at that. And it's like the next, and I was like, okay, now I wanna get this, unlock all the trophies on like Uncharted on PlayStation. So it's like, <laughs> but it was like, it was all these things, right? Yeah. But it's like for that moment, that was my purpose. Yeah, and, and and the video emphasized the importance of, of think of like these little missions as like batteries, and you hmm. and you or like resources, and you, and the thing is, right, you won't your new purpose won't be revealed to you until you drain that little mini purpose to exhaustion before the next. And sometimes you'll have many, a lot of many, many purposes yeah. before you get to the, oh, that's why I'm here. Yeah, I, I, you know I what just saying? like, I like life being its own little bucket list for you. Exactly. And it's like, you have to chop down these little mini purposes, right? Before you get to the final. So, and I, I love how you mentioned like, you know, your, you feel like your purpose now, right? Is making music to let people know you can be anything. You can be weak, you can be whatever. You can be, you can still be the shit. Right, yeah. and that's your purpose now, and just like you know, when you're in Mizu, you, your purpose then was to like be a beast at wrestling. So yeah. it's like these different levels were necessary, and, and then but the most important thing though, and I want to finish this nail in the coffin is when you're in these little mini purposes, don't half ass it. That's the thing. So oh, go all the way. I hate to say, if you're gonna be a oh. fuck boy, be a complete fuck boy. So that you get it out of your system, because we see oh, this. Man, you, something out of it. You get something. We do it all the way. If oh, you're going through a phase up, where you where you on demon time, go through that shit. Do be. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. it's like if you leave a little bit left, we see it all the time. People, they 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 they, they had some gas in the tank. They had they were on two percent on all these little mini tasks, right? And that took away. Then they never find their main purpose because they, they never re come. Keep recycling the same mission. They yeah, keep going. that's and how you see these niggas at thirty five still, still in the club wearing them joggers, dude. man. Are you seeing somebody at fifty? Now he got a Lamborghini here on the beach trying to pick up girls. Like, like, I was just saying, like, you see all these old ass niggas with these sexual demons and shit. Pastors, pastors, yeah. priests. Priests touching on little boys they and wouldn't shit. allow themselves to fulfill they, their yeah, message. Like, exactly. Like, exactly. that's some real shit. Because then normal sexuality would have just probably gone through a whole phase, but now they're touching kids. Because Cause somebody it, told them they can't be a pastor exactly. and also go through a whole phase. Yeah, you know what's so funny about that? Like, <laughs> repressed emotion. I yes. swear to God, I know so many people who I love when it's just me and them. To me, like, I have, I, I'm not naming names. I got friends who, to me, I'm just, you, to me, I, I just see so much, like, they like when it's just me and them. When there's not the pressure of being something else. Like, I mean, I feel like everybody failed at at the script. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. What What's funny to me is, I understand that my daddy that had to beat a lot of people ass because he is emotional as I am. So he got good at fighting. <laughs> that's how I am. You know what I'm saying? Like that that's that's so funny yeah. it's some funny shit to me. But like I get it. You know what I'm saying? And it's and it's even the reason, like, I like that it lit a fire under me in a lot of ways. But also I like that I can let go of that shit. Because exactly. I, because it served its purpose. Exactly. And you can only let go of it. I hate to say it. You can only let go of it if you look at it positively. That's the only way you can do it. It's not to say if you've hurt people in the past that you're happy that you did it. It's to say that I'm glad that I learned that lesson. Because if you never acknowledge that you hurt people, you're going to continue to duplicate the behavior that hurt that people in the first place. And what you duplicate becomes a habit. And what, you be, what becomes a habit becomes not a personality. It becomes who you are. Yeah. This is my religious belief, honestly. Yeah, I was going to say, like... I was going to say, like, Sakari, that you don't go to the next 
in my opinion, you don't get to go. You get to have to walk the earth as a spirit. Please stay into the mic because we want to hear that. Just it's yeah, okay. Bro. Just slide into the uh, car. You can stay there. Just like yeah, just tilt it. Uh, you want to hear no, that. that's just my complete religious belief is that you just have to keep going through the same thing over and over and 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 God like God will just or whatever you believe will just make you stay in one place until you're able to go to the next place because you finally learned the thing that you couldn't learn in your physical body. But yeah, my fault. That's. Yeah, you cool. No, that's facts. Yeah. I don't need to hear that. Thank you. I'll say, honestly, we were talking about that like maybe a week or so ago. Honestly, for me, it's like, I literally just believe that, that, that death means you, you just in your shit now when you die. So if your shit is heaven, that's where you at. If your shit is hell, that's where you at. Like, I think, I think. You know, like like that. That's that's what's real to me. Is what's real to me is we the energy we carry in our lives colors everything we experience. I've seen people suffer, like suffer in ways I don't understand, and have so much peace because they're at peace. You know, that's what they found, and I've seen people who have never suffered in hell. You know, um, to me. To me, that's just because that that's where that's you, you know, you, you're, you're, you're heaven, you're, you're hell. So if you find yourself, if you die and you just, you're just there, I mean, I think you still got time to get out of hell. You just got to get your shit together. And, and honestly, to yeah, and we, and we all trying to get our shit together at the end of the day. It's funny as a thought. Cause like, I go back and think about like some homophobic shit I said back in the day and like, you know, like some like sex and shit and whatever. And it's shit that today I'd be embarrassed as fuck about. Like, I'd be mad at niggas for saying. But when I think about it, I'm like, I'm glad I said it. And look, I said the shit with my chest. Like, my literal philosophy on my life is, if you said some shit, say it with your chest. And now hear that shit reverberate. Hear that shit reverberate off the walls after you said that shit with your chest. Do you believe in that? If you do, that's you. Like, There's a place for you. I respect, like, on some level, I respect that. Even if I don't fuck with what you said, on some level, I respect that. Mm. If you said that shit and you cringed a little, investigate that. Like, on God, investigate that. For me, I mean, yeah, I spent my whole life, my, my whole upbringing in the church. Of course, I didn't question it. This was right, this was wrong. But... When I think about it, and I say that shit with my chest, I ain't mean nothing to me. That's just some shit I was repeating. And so many people to me just repeating some other shit somebody else said. Like, <laughs> it's again what I mean when I say, when I, made, when, I, when I made my first project, I knew I needed to have my own words first. Because, I mean... You're tired of repeating. Yeah, I don't, I don't fuck with that. Because to me... When you're repeating, A, you're you're dimming your own light. And B, you're limiting yourself. No, I'm glad you touch on that. I'm glad you touch on that. By the way, our teeth are red because we're eating beets. So we're not we didn't become vampires over the tech check. <laughs> I would. Not yet. Um <laughs> But um no, yeah, everything you said is just spot on. It's just and it's, it is easier said than done, but as a people, you mm -hmm. know, as young men, we need to, yes, you know, look for qualities in others, you feel me, that you, that you want to model, but don't oh, imitate. Yeah. So move from modeling, move from imitation to modeling, right? So instead of, like, it's, and, it, and it goes back to like, even like how, how pickup, like these pickup artists. And like that whole community. Mm -hmm. And it's like, and I want to draw a, a tie between that. It's like, like these people imitate the practices of people who actually got it, how they get girls. But they imitate what you can see. It's like, yeah. oh, okay. Um, what's his name? Leonardo DiCaprio. He gets all these girls. Let's see what he does. Let's study what he does. And they'll like copy what he, the words he says. And copy like the money he, or the boat he buys. Mm -hmm. Or copy that. When it's like, no. Yeah, those things... But he, he gets the girls because of who he is. He's Leonardo DiCaprio. And all those things, he can say anything, 
And like people who imitators mm -hmm. will like, okay, that must be the way. And they'll copy it and get no success. Because that's what happens when you're a replicator, when you're an imitator. Yeah. You don't you can get momentary success, but it's not sustained. Dude. And like you said, going all the way back to what you said at the beginning, you said it takes energy to lie. It, it takes. takes energy to cap. It takes energy to be inauthentic. Dude. Leonardo DiCaprio is putting zero energy into getting girls. Zero effort. You know what I'm saying? But you, as a pickup, oh, I got to say this. I gotta, you're overthinking. You're tripping now. You're doing too much. And, and, and you're not getting the results. Yeah, man. It's just, um, just replication. As a society, as young men, we just have to move into... Owning the uncomfortable, becoming at home with the discomfort, and understanding during the comfort. Because it's easy to, after the comfort, or a after the discomfort, to be like, oh, yeah, I learned the lesson. But during the comfort, it's easy to, like, to not, sorry, during the discomfort or during the suffering, it's easy to, like, want to escape. It's easy yeah. to, like, want to get drunk. It's easy to, like, want to fucking go on a sex binge or, like, want to fucking, you know what I'm saying? It's easy to do that and just to continue to escape so you continue in the purgatory of replicating the shit that you've been doing forever, right? So it's easy to do that, but, you know, just let's move into, just just go through that pain, feel what you feel, and just from that feeling, you know, introspect into the things of your life that you need to change so that you can, again, go to that new battery of that new purpose, right? Sometimes that purpose is not gonna be your final purpose, but don't worry about that at the time. Yeah, just man. give it your all. And um, and honestly, know. like the more you that's in what you do, the more the more you'll you'll get out of it, man. Like I swear to God, don't fight yourself, don't limit yourself. Be you, like like be you before anybody else and before anything else. Before you're great, be you. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's the first step. That's the pre rap. I mean, about Kanye, when niggas was rapping around his time, that nigga. You didn't rap if you wasn't if you wasn't rapping about the same shit everybody was talking about. <laughs> and that's everybody. I mean, the motherfuckers who do shit, the translators, people, the people who are remembered are the people who are they self. That's the reason they were special. Cause everybody's special, if they are allowed to be. We have to allow ourselves, yeah, to be special. I love that. It is be yourself before trying to be great. Just be yourself. <laughs> I like that one too. Ooh, Kari out here dropping. You feel me? I, my, see what my pen I should have my pen. Zion <laughs> dropping. You feel me, Jims too. Um, is there anything you want to add? You want to say to the world? You feel me? Before we before we wrap this up. I mean, shout out my my nigga hit Zion. That's my brother. I motherfucking love him, <laughs> and he cooking right now. Y'all mm -hmm. niggas don't know, but he cooking. Beast. Shout out free to cash flow. Call her cooking. She. She called in there, buddy, as usual. <laughs> Shout out myself. I got some shit planned, but more on that later. Shout out my nigga Lee Maj. He got some shit.